What's up gamers, I'm back with a full review of the Ambernic RG353V, a device that has really surprised me from the moment I unboxed it until now. I've spent three weeks putting this thing to the test, and here's what I found out. Let's get into it. Oh Ambernic, why do you have to be so awesome? You tempt me with all these fun devices and the promise of reliving some of the best gaming memories of my youth. But it's more than just a promise. It's a promise fulfilled. I'll just go ahead and say it right up front. The RG353V is my favorite device of 2023 so far. I honestly never expected it to be, and there's still time for it to be dethroned. In fact, I'm expecting a Pow Kitty RGB30 to arrive tomorrow. Subscribe so you don't miss that content. But for now, it's beaten out my previous favorite, the admirable RG35XX. So, Bo, what makes this glorified Game Boy so great? Thanks for asking, Pegleg Greg23. Let me walk you through this, starting with the build quality. One thing that Ambernic does really well, the RG Nano aside, is give us quality D-pads. And I can't stress enough how important that is for retro games. The responsiveness has to be on point, and this thing feels like my childhood. Any 80s and 90s kid out there will know exactly what I mean when they pick this thing up. The amount of give, the travel distance, how it springs back up, this is the way a D-pad was meant to feel. The face buttons are just as perfect, and I think that's because of the rubber membranes underneath. They're not cheap or thin. They're also not too thick. They have the right amount of resistance. It allows the buttons and D-pad to be very tactile and quick to respond. I never feel like I'm going to mash too hard and break one of these or cause them to sink below the casing and get stuck. It really does feel like Ambernick cares about their brand and their name, and they put the money behind manufacturing to nail this, and I absolutely love that. Quickly, I'll mention again, like I said in my unboxing video, that the triggers are a big improvement over the RG35XX. They have a much tighter fit and don't rattle as much. Ergonomically, they could still be improved, but I've gotten used to it. All the other function buttons don't feel quite as premium, but they're also much less important to gameplay. And in my intense testing, I found nothing wrong with them. They all did what they were intended to do. And then there's the joysticks. They're all right. They are definitely Joy-Con style sticks. In fact, they may even be from the same manufacturer. They're very, very similar. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you absolutely hate the sticks on the Nintendo Switch, you're probably not gonna like these. But in my playtime, I found them to work pretty well. There's good tension and spring back. I don't think Ambernick cheaped out on these either. They're very low profile, but obviously Ambernick designed this with portability in mind. Speaking of portability, is this pocketable? It sticks out a little if you place it face out, but it's less pronounced if the buttons are against your leg because the corners are more rounded. It's shorter than most smartphones, but it's quite a bit thicker. Plus, the shoulder buttons and joysticks protrude a little. I don't know if you'd want it in your pocket all day, but if you're going out for a couple of hours and you know you're gonna have some downtime while you wait for your wife to try on shoes or something, well then yes, it is absolutely a pocketable device and way more fun than scrolling social media and seeing even more pictures of Aunt Patricia's orange tabby. By all means, pocket away. I have affiliate links below. Use them at no additional cost to you and save yourself from the tabby. One of the other cool features of this device is that it's actually one of the cheapest dual boot retro devices on the market. That means it runs Android 11 as well as Linux and you get to choose which you want to run and you can swap between them whenever you like. So I want to take a couple of minutes to walk you through that. To boot into Android you simply remove the Linux OS from the TF1 card slot leaving your TF2 card in the device because that's where your games are stored. Now, Android 11 does not come with Google Play Store on this device. They're basically using it as a front-end launcher for your emulators, but it does come with a whole bunch of emulators pre-installed. There's a little bit of setup involved because you will have to tell each emulator the file path to get to your games, but all you have to do is tap through to the gaming system folder that the appropriate games are in and then hit OK. The emulator will do the rest. By the way, the RG353V does have a 3.5 inch 640x480 multi touch display, and that touch screen is really helpful in navigating Android 11. The stock Ambernic OS runs on Linux and is actually pretty good. Here's a look at it. I think if you're a person who doesn't want to mess or tinker with the device, you just want something that works straight out of the box, then this is a great choice that gives you two great ways to play, whether you prefer Linux or Android. 
you're covered. One difference between the two, just so you know, is that the touchscreen is only enabled on the Android side. Now, that doesn't really matter to me personally, but if you're hoping to play Nintendo DS on this exclusively, one, you'll have to use Android for some games that require the touchscreen, and two, you better have pretty good eyesight because viewing both screens on here at once gets pretty small. But for those who like tinkering and customizing, you're in for a treat. The Ambernic RG353V runs on the RK3566 quad-core processor, and this processor is found in quite a few other retro handhelds, and because of that widespread use, the open source community has developed a couple of other Linux-based operating systems systems worth checking out. One of those is called ArcOS. Now if you've seen my RG353PS review, you'll know that I found ArcOS gave me performance improvements in some games over Ambernix stock OS on that device. And I think the same thing is true here. ArcOS also has a lot of different themes you can choose from to change up the look, and it's just a fun one to play around with. I think this is a true upgrade if you're wanting to take things to the next level. But my new personal favorite is another community-made firmware called Gel OS or Jealous. You see what they did there? That's pretty clever. I give you a round of applause. Gel OS boosts performance as well, but I've really enjoyed some of the other customizations, like this fade that happens when you start a game. With the built-in Wi-Fi, you can sign in to your free Retro Achievements account and earn achievements by completing tasks in your games. You can also sign up for a free Scraper account and download box art and gameplay snippets that will tell you more about your ROMs. It's just a really slick firmware, and it's been getting regular over-the-air updates and improvements. It also has this fire screen screensaver that will show you random games on your device and if you see one that interests you you just hit start and it will go right into that game and that's such a fun feature what a great idea plus you can set up co-op play between two devices over Wi-Fi even if you're not somewhere with an internet connection like for example on a road trip and I think that's absolutely brilliant especially if kids are involved other things I should probably mention battery life is good I've been getting about five hours between charges the screen is vibrant and decently bright. I haven't had any trouble with overheating, although it can get a little warm when playing 3D games. The speaker is really nice and I appreciate the placement in the middle of the device because it never gets blocked by my hands. Save and load states are easy and super helpful. One negative that I will mention is that it doesn't save all the networks you connect to. It only stores one Wi-Fi network at a time. So if you move locations, you have to type in the Wi-Fi password every time. Because of that, I've actually been thinking about signing in to my phone's hotspot and letting that be my internet connection since it's basically always with me. But on a positive note, you don't need an internet connection to play the games or enjoy this device because the games this plays weren't built with the internet in mind for the most part. This will play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Game Boy Color, Nintendo DS, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, PSP, you get the picture. This is not a device for GameCube or PS2 and not all games on the higher end systems will run well, but a lot will, and all the lower powered systems will run flawlessly. And I think that's about it. I'm superbly happy with this one, and if you decide to use one of my affiliate links below, I think you'll be really happy as well. I'm trying to get monetized by the end of the year, and I can't do it without you. So please leave a like and a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And guys, share this video with your wives with a Christmas tree emoji and a winky face. Stay kind and encouraging out there, and I'll catch you on the flippity flip. Thank you.